gonna be flat off. Ciao! Ciao, mi chiamo Giulia. Good evening. With all this COVID virus thing that's going on at the moment, we're a bit bored at home, but I've decided to share something with you all. Um, my dough recipe. It's actually my wife's dough recipe, but I've adjusted it a little bit through a few recommendations from a shop in Italy. Um, it's just made it a little bit easier. So I'll go through the ingredients and how I make it, and I'm going to let it settle for 40 hours. So we're not going to use this until Sunday lunchtime at this stage, right? Now it's Friday evening. Um, and the, we're going to make wood-fired pizzas from, the, from them as well. Um, hopefully a Julia doesn't come in and be a bit annoying or the dogs, so let's get started. It's important to have a nice pizza topping. This one is fresh. It's going on the top of the salchicha pizza. More like he'll eat the salchicha pizza. Can I continue with my video? Yeah, 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 bad boy, bad boy. Okay, so first of all, I'll run through the ingredients and our recipe. Basically, I use 800 ml of lukewarm water, first of all one kilo of double zero flour, four level teaspoons of dried yeast, one tablespoon of salt, one teaspoon of sugar, one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. The first thing I'm going to do is put some lukewarm water into a container Then I'm going to get the yeast and put that into that container and start stirring that because we want the water to dissolve the yeast. So with the back of the spoon I push into the bowl and that slowly starts to dissolve the yeast. Alright, it assists it anyway. So see how that goes for a few minutes. We'll just leave that aside after we stir this a little bit. Uh, so we'll just leave that there for a minute. All right, so I'll put that aside there. Now, next thing I've done is I've weighed one kilo of double zero flour. That flour, I put that into our bowl for the mixer. I use, me and my wife, we use um, a mixer for our, our dough. Just put that aside. So, I'll just create a little hole in the middle there. That. Put that onto the KitchenAid. Next thing I'll do is this yeast that's dissolving now, I'm going to pour that into the center hole. Then I'm going to pour the sugar and the salt. Now this is just our recipe, guys, because some people have, there are very many recipes to get your dough, dough right and I've looked on the internet and there's just so many ways to do your dough, but we just find this is a little bit easiest for us. So just move the mixer into the middle a little bit here. Put that down. Now I'm going to start mixing slightly, only on low speed, for the oiling.
Now, some people don't like using the mixer or they believe that it's too hard on the mixer itself. But with my recipe of 800 ml of water, their recipe of 800 ml of water, it's a fairly runny dough. So it assists the mixer. But I don't just pour it straight in there. I go back into this bowl and pick up any other bits of yeast that are still on the side walls. Right, back in there. Mixers start to work a little bit harder now. That's all right. And now I'll pour in the rest of the water. One of the things I like to do is let the mixer work for about 10 to 15 minutes. I want to see no lumps or clumps in there and sometimes I even pull it out and move it around with a spatula and then turn the mixer back on. So down the bottom it's just a little bit uh, flowery, so I'm just going to turn that around a bit. Put that back under the hook. So when it doesn't look so lumpy or claggy, then it's just about ready for you to take out of the mixer. So this is one kilo, but when we're making pizzas and when people are coming over, we can make up to three kilos. So sometimes it's two kilos, and we usually get six pizzas out of one batch of a kilo. So, I'm just going to move this aside now. Okay, so now, I'm going to get some flour. Leave it on the bench. Make the bench nice and dusty. And powder up your fingers and just like flick the edges. The more you touch the dough, the more it tries to stick to your fingers. So, short sharp stabs at the dough, and you can see it's quite runny. Now 
Right, so, um, where I learnt this method was in a town in Italy called Avezzano. Um, now, in that town, there's a, a pizza shop. We were there uh, last year, and that pizza shop's called Arte Bianca. We were talking to the uh, lady that owns the business, and she said, she told us her recipe, and she said that they let, her, let their dough um, prove for 48 hours. Um, look them up on Instagram and look at their pizza, um, their dough, the types of pizzas they make. And she also told us they use 800 ml of water. And so I come back to Australia, grab the, grab the, um, uh, make some pizza dough, and all of a sudden it is very runny, and I didn't know how to work it. But if you can see how I'm working it now, and you get it very floured up, it's a very good mix. All right. It's very fluffy, very light. The pizza becomes very light, and this is so. I'll need this for about 10 minutes, like this. All right. So I've got it to the point where it's got flour on all the sides that I can roll it around. It's not sticking much to the bench. All right. Always keep your hands floured. The dough floured, and. It works well. It does stick a bit to your hands as well, but you've got to work with it and try and touch it only in short sessions. Very quick, sharp, short sessions. Not to have your hands on it too long. Because the more you keep your hands on it, the more it sticks to you. Alright guys, so that's that's our dough ball. Now, next thing I'm going to do is put it in this um, container, but before I do that, I use cooking spray, and I will spray the bowl, especially around the upper edges. Reason being, it's all going to stick when it rises to the edges. Right. So I'll just pick that up, place that in there like that. Now, I'm going to get some Glad Wrap. Now, this is the important part as well. Um, you're probably thinking, what's he doing spraying that? It's upside down. But I'm just going to turn that over now. And what that does, it will not allow the dough, once it's risen, to stick to the glad wrap. Alright, so that's it there. The next thing I'm going to do is put some water in the sink. Alright, warm water, lukewarm water in the sink. I want to help it along a little bit to grow into shape, uh, grow, grow in size. So I'll put that in the water for about an hour and I'll show you what it looks like in one hour's time. Put that back in there. Get one of your good tea towels. This one here is from Rocca Calascio in Abruzzo. I don't know if anyone knows the region. Um, it's a beautiful tower in Abruzzo. Alright, so we'll leave that there. And we'll come back in one hour. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm going to take the tea towel off and let's have a look what it looks like. Alright, so it's nearly full to the top. Remove the glad wrap. See how it doesn't stick? Stuck a little bit in one spot, but and that's what it looks like. That on the bench again. Now what I'm going to do is make it into a long strip. And roll it a bit. that. Now at that point there I'm going to divide it up into six sections. Look at roughly where the center is. Then divide roughly into three. That doesn't look too accurate so I'll go back a bit there. Back there. Alright so back there and there. Okay, then cut. Grab that and just roll it around a bit. And that's one of my dough balls. Like that. So, then I'll grab a tray and just dust the tray lightly. Put that onto the tray like that. Do that for the rest of them as well. I'm trying not to squash them too much because I want them to remain airy. Alright, so that's three. You know, if you want to get technical, you can weigh the dough. Um, and divide it into six and then make them perfect but I'm not really that fancy um, all right so that's that's that again there like that so then what I do is get my glad wrap again Spray it, turn it over, place it back over the tray. So that's what it looks like there. I'm going to put another layer of glad wrap on that as well in the opposite direction. Just to hold it. So that's going to go in the fridge and I'm going to pull that out on Sunday when we're ready to make the pizzas. So I'm going to do exactly the same for this batch. That's it guys, straight into the fridge. We'll see what it looks like on Sunday. Okay, so it's now 40 hours. That's what it looks like. It looks very airy, very probably overproof, some people would call it. But, you know, that's what we've been doing some days. But some days we don't even do this recipe. Some days we, um, look at that, look at the holes in it. Some days we don't have time to do it two days beforehand, so we just do it on the day. But some days we go to this extreme. So that's three balls. All right. So that's pretty much flattened out 
and that's where the first ball should be there. Like that. So now I'm going to pull them apart. Flare on the bench again. Flare up the fingers as well. Same again. Just going to get it back into that dough ball. Alright, so that's one ball. That's ready to go. Alright, so we're going to put that back on a tray. We'll do the same with the other two. And we'll see how it goes. Alright, so that's three. I'll do the other three now. And if you want to see us make the pizzas, subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Nice necklace, Julia. I know, right? Bon giorno. Do you like my I necklace? I like your necklace. Yeah. It's fashion. a bit hot. <laughs> <laughs> On the money.